So hello everyone. So now we uh, continue our uh, chapter number five. Okay, uh, in the uh, part two. So we continue for uh, production function algebraic uh, form. So up until now we have relied on tables and graphs to illustrate the concept of uh, underlying production. So uh, the production notion of uh, production function can be expressed mathematically and in fact it is possible to use statistical technique like those discussed in uh, previous chapter to estimate a particular fun uh, functional form for a production function. So in this section we highlight some more uh, commonly accounted algebraic forms of production function. So we begin with the most uh, simple production function a linear function of the input eh? a linear uh, function of uh, the input okay so a linear uh, production function uh, input are perfect uh, in a perfect substitute as you can see from here eh? so q equal to f eh? kl equal uh, to a k plus b l where a and b yeah, we uh, where a and b yeah, uh, are constant yeah. so with a linear production function input a perfect sub substitute so there is a perfect linear relationship between all the input and total output for instance suppose it take workers at a plant four hours to produce what a machine can make in one hour so in, in this case, uh, production function is linear uh, with uh, A equal to uh, 4 and B uh, equal to 1. Okay? So when uh, we put uh, this case, okay? uh, we can add uh, Q uh, equal to F uh, KL equal to uh, 4K plus uh, a one plus L okay. so this is the mathematical way of stating that capital is always four times as productive as labor okay. furthermore since F uh, say uh, Example, you can put uh, here. Maybe we can add a uh, one example here. Okay. To discuss about this this uh, section. Okay. Uh, let's say since uh, five uh, f a uh, uh, five two equal to four. Eh? Uh, times 5 uh, plus 1 uh, times 2 so that's mean equal to 22 so we know that 5 units of capital eh? 5 units of capital and 2 units of labor will produce uh, 22 units of output okay so that's uh, what we I can see example from a linear production function. I'll go back here, relative uh, production function. Uh, so in this uh, uh, production function, so input I use in fixed proportions. Eh? Input input I use in fixed proportion. So let's say in here, okay, uh, in this relative. Okay. 
So same like uh, linear production function where A and B are constant. Uh, so the Lyantif uh, production function is also called the fixed proportion production function because it uh, implies that input are used in fixed proportion. So example for this, okay. So uh, Leontief production function is given by Q equal to F uh, uh, times K L uh, equal to mean uh, uh, A K and uh, B L. Where A and B are constants, so the relative production function is also called a fixed. Okay, uh, what we call as a fixed uh, proportion function. So we call it as also as a fixed production fixed proportion production function. Okay. Because uh, it implies uh, that input are used in fit proportion. So to see this, suppose the production function for a work uh, processing uh, firm is Leontief. Okay. Uh, for example, the production function for a word processing firm is Leontief. With uh, A equal to B equal to 1. So think of K as a number of keyboard and L as a number of keyboarders. So the production uh, function that implies that one keyboarders and one keyboard can produce one paper per hour. So two paper borders and two uh, keyboard can produce two papers per hour and so forth. But how many papers can one book keyboarders and five keyboards uh, produce powers? So the answer is only still one paper. Okay? Answer still in one paper. So additional keyboard are useful only to the extent that additional keyboarders are available to use them. So in other words, keyboard and keyboarders must be used in a fixed proportion of one keyboarder for every keyboard. Okay. So uh, to see this uh, clearly, we can see this example. Okay. For example, uh, the engineer of Morris Industry obtained. Uh, the following estimate of the firm's production function okay where uh, q equal to f k l equal to mean uh, uh, 3k and 4l okay so how much output is produced when two unit of labor and five unit of capital are employed so we simply calculate f uh, uh, by uh, times pi 2 okay but F uh, times 5, 2 equal to mean okay, uh, 3 uh, times 5 and 4 times 2. I mean, uh, equal to mean okay, uh, 5, 15 and 8. Okay. So since the minimum the minimum of number 15 and 8 is 8, so we know that 5 units of capital and 2 units of labor produce 8 units of output okay so production function that lies between uh, the extreme of the linear uh, function and relative uh, production function is the cobb douglas production function so we can go back here cobb douglas production function okay so this is a function that lies between the extreme of linear production function and the Leontief production function, what we call as a Cobb Douglas production function. So the Cobb Douglas production function is given by uh, Q equal to F uh, K L equal to mean uh, B equal to mean uh, B K and CL okay.
Okay, B, where uh, B and C, okay, are still a constant. So unlike in this, uh, in the case of linear production function, the relationship between output and input is not linear. So unlike in the Leontief production function, input need uh, not to be used in fixed propor uh, proportion. So the Cobb Douglas production function uh, assumes some degree of substitu substitutability between the input. So I'll make not uh, perfect substitu substitutability. Okay, uh, before we explain uh, how that we can measure the productivity, okay, uh, from a different way. So this is our another way, okay, that we can measure uh, our productivity using algebra. Eh? So given an algebra algebra form of production function, we may calculate eh, uh, various measure of productivity. For example, we learn that average product of in, in input is the output produced divided by the number of unit use of the input. So this concept can easily be extended to production processes that use more than one input. Okay, to be concrete, suppose a consultant provide you with uh, the following estimate of your firm called the Douglas production function. Okay. Uh, Q equal to F uh, uh, KL equal to K uh, half uh, or 0 0.5 and L uh, half uh, or 0 0.5 so K is fact at is fixed in 16 unit in this example okay And then uh, short run Cobb Douglas uh, production function. Let's say uh, we put uh, Q equal to 16 uh, half L half. It means equal to 4 L half. Eh? Okay, to total product when 100 units of labor are used. Okay, so we can just calculate eh? uh, Q, uh, Q equal to 4 okay? times 100. Okay, because uh, that's uh, equal to 4 uh, times 10 that means okay total product when 100 units of labor are used eh? okay can get equal to 40 units okay this is one uh, we uh, can use for uh, Cobb Douglas eh? Cobb Douglas production function uh, one sorry okay this is we have been discussed before uh, productivity measures uh, based on average product of any input okay uh, this is another one example that can we can uh, use uh, average product of any input measure of output produce per unit of input eh? okay just simply average product of uh, okay uh, of labor okay APL equal to quantity or output okay divided by labor okay so this one we been uh, we have uh, been discussed before in the part one okay and then uh, also we can use a productivity measures um, is on marginal uh, marginal product of an input Okay. Also, we've been discussed before eh, with some of uh, table and graph eh, in the first in in part one, yeah. and uh, this also okay, uh, we've been discussed from the uh, part one. Eh. Okay, if you still remember in this okay, uh, okay. This figure 5.1 uh, showing uh, same uh, slide here, okay, increasing, diminishing, and negative marginal re uh, re uh, returns. Yeah.
Okay, product producing on the uh, production function, aligning incentive to induce maximum uh, worker effort. So, eh? This is uh, some guided for uh, managers. Eh? Uh, this is also uh, to a role of the manager that we've been discussed from the uh, part one. Yeah, uh, we have to produce or produce on the production function. Okay, and employing the right level of input. Okay. So when labor or capital vary in the short run to maximum to maximize the profit, a manager will hire. Okay, so this is also we've been discussed in the uh, part one. So now we continue with. Uh, okay, okay, this one much better. Look here. So our next task is to examine the optimal choice of capital and labor in the long run. So when both uh, uh, input are free to vary, so in the presence of multiple variable of uh, production, uh, various uh, combination of input enable the manager to produce the same level of output. Okay. For example, an automobile assembly line can produce 1000 car per hour by using 10 workers and one robot so it can also produce 1000 car by using only two workers and uh, three robots so to minimize the cost of producing 1000 cars the manager must determine the efficient combination of input to use to produce them so the basic tool for understanding how alternative input can be used to produce output is an iso quant eh? so that's why The and as a quan define the combination of input eh? uh, K and L okay? that yield the producer the same level of output that is any combination of capital and labor along an isoquan produces produces the same level of uh, output. Okay, you can see shape of iso one okay this not, not here for example in here okay we can see this figure uh, for us to get more understanding about this Okay. So, figure 5.3 depicts a typical set of isoquants eh? because input bundle A and B both lie on the same isoquant. Eh? Each will produce the same level of output, namely uh, Q0 unit. Eh? So, input mix A implies a more capital intensive plant that does input uh, mix B. So, as uh, more of both input are used. A higher isoquant is obtained. Thus, as we move in the northern uh, direction in the figure, okay, uh, each new isoquant is uh, associated with higher and higher level of output. Okay. You can see increase the output here. Okay. And notice that the isoquant in figure 5.3 are convex. Uh, convex. So the reason isoquant are typically drawn with a convex shape is that input such as capital and labor uh, typically are not perfectly substitutable. So in figure 5.0, for example, if we start at a point A and begin substituting, substituting labor for capital, 
so it takes increasing amount of labor to replace each unit of capital that is taken away okay so the rate at which labor and capital can substitute substitute for each other is called the marginal rate of of technical technical substitution or mrts so the mrts a capit of capital and labor is the absolute value of the slope of the acid one and is simply the ratio of the marginal product okay, this is marginal rate of technical substitution so the rate of which two input are substituted while maintaining the same output level eh? okay mrts kl for two uh, MPL divided by MP okay. K okay, this is a uh, can see uh, Leontief Isaac one eh? and then uh, linear as a quant yeah. so different uh, production function will imply different marginal rates of technical substitution for example uh, the linear production function implies as quant that are linear as you can see from this figure okay so capital and labor are perfect substitutes example here So this is because the input are perfect substitute for each other and the rate or uh, and the rate at which the producer can substitute between the input is independent of the level of input usage okay. specifically uh, for the linear production function you can see q equal to a k plus uh, b l okay the marginal rate of technical substitution is b b divided by a okay so since okay b is divided by a since mp uh, l okay equal to b and mpk equal to a so this is independent of the level of input utilized And the Leontief a production function, and on, uh, on the other hand, implies as a quant that's uh, L shape, eh? L shape here, as you can see from this figure, eh? Q1, uh, Q2, and Q3. Eh? So in this case, inputs must be used in fixed proportion. So the manager cannot substitute between capital and labor and maintain the same level of output for the Leontief production function there is no MRTS because uh, there is no substitution among inputs along okay, and as if one for most of production uh, relation the as one lies somewhere between the perfect substitute and fixed proportion cases Okay, for most uh, pro, uh, in uh, this instance, uh, the input are substitutable for one another, so but uh, not perfectly, and the rate of uh, at which a manager can substitute among input will change along an isoquant. Okay, so that's the production function satisfies uh, the law of diminishing marginal rate of technical substitution. Okay. So as a producer use less of uh, an input, increasingly more of the other input must be employed employed to produce the same level of output. Okay. So
so it can be shown at the Cobb Douglas production functions function implies eh, I suppose that I have a diminishing marginal rate of technical substitution substitution So, as uh, less of one input is used in the production process, increasingly more of the other input must be employed eh, to produce the same output level. Okay. And then, uh, when we discuss about uh, isocost, eh? isocost uh, is a line that uh, represents the combination of input that will cost the producer uh, the same amount of money as isocost. Combination of input that uh, that produce a given level output at the same cost. Eh? Okay. Notice that different combination of capital and labor end up costing the firm uh, the same amount. So the combination of input that will cost the firm uh, the same uh, amount comprise an isocost line. So the relation of an isocost line is graph uh, in here. So to understand this concept, suppose the firm spend uh, exactly yeah, uh, C dollars, yeah, C dollars uh, on input yeah, as a cost, C as a cost on input. So then the cost of labor plus the cost of capital exactly equals uh, C dollars. Yeah. Okay, so that's why we put WL plus RK equal to C. Yeah. Okay. Maybe you can change the range here to see more clear about this graph. Right. So uh, you can see from here W, okay, W uh, is the wage rate, uh, the price of labor, and R is the rental rate, uh, the price of capital. Uh, this is uh, where you put uh, denote uh, rental as a R, and W as a wage uh, or salary of the labor. So this equation represents the formula for an ISO, ISO cost line. Uh, this is represent the ISO cost line. Okay. So we may obtain a more convenient uh, expression for the slope and intercept of uh, an ISO cost line as follows. Eh? Uh, we can see here. So that's along an isocost line. K is a linear function of L with a vertical intercept of CR and a slope of uh, WR. Okay. Not that if the producer wishes to use more of both input, more money must be spent. Thus, isocost associated with higher cost lie above those with lower cost. When input prices are constant, so the ISO cost line will be uh, parallel to one one to another. Yeah. Similarly, changes in input price affect the position of ISO cost line. So an increase in the price of labor makes the ISO cost curve steeper. Yeah. Uh, this is when we see 
the new ISO cost line for a decrease or increase price of labor. So, okay, maybe it can be more steeper. Okay. So, the changes in input price change the slope of ISO cost line. So one of the uh, principle here is changes in ISO cost. Okay. Changes in ISO cost uh, for given input price, ISO cost farther from the origin are associated with higher cost. Changes in input prices change the slope of ISO cost, ISO cost line. So the ISO cost and ISO quant just define, maybe uh, used to determine the input usage that minimizes production cost so if there are no scarcity the producer uh, would not care about production cost but because scarcity is an economic reality uh, producer are interest in the cost minimization that is producer producing output at the lowest uh, possible cost after all the after all to maximize eh, to maximize the profit So the firm must uh, first produce uh, its output in the least cost manner. So even not for profit organization can achieve their objective by providing a given level of service at the lowest possible cost. So let, add, let us uh, piece together the tool developed thus far to see how to choose the optimal max mix of uh, capital and labor. So consider uh, for example you can see from this figure okay see together this uh, figure 5.x okay figure input mix b minimize the cost of producing and the units of output so consider an input uh, bundle such as that at point a in figure 5.8 okay Figure 5.8. This combination of L and K lies on the isoquant label Q0 and thus uh, produces a Q0 unit of output. So it also lies on the isocost line through point A. So thus, if the producer uses uh, input mix A, he or she will produce Q0 unit of output at total cost of C, C1. Okay. So in this, the cost minimizing way to produce the uh, given level uh, of outputs clearly uh, clearly not for by uh, for by using input max mix B instead of A. Yeah. So the producer could produce the same amount of output at a lower cost, namely C2. So in short, it is inefficient for the producer to use input mix A because input mix B produces the same output and lies on the lower 
isocost line okay so at the cost minimizing input mix the slope of the isocorn is equal uh, to the slope of the isocost line okay recalling that the, uh, that the absolute value of the slope of the isocorn reflect the marginal rate of technical substitution and that the slope of isocost line is given by uh, w, uh, w divided by divided r so we see uh, that at the cost minimizing input mix yeah, as like mrts yeah, kl equal to w divided r so if this condition did not hold that the technical rate or at which the producer could substitute between l and k would differ from the rate market rate at which c or he could substitute between the input for example at point a in figure uh, 5.x yeah. so the slope of isocorn is steeper than the slope of the isocost line consequently uh, capital is too expensive yeah. uh, the producer find it in his or her interest to use less capital and more labor to produce the given level of output so this substitution continues until ultimately the producer is at a point such as b so where the mrts is equal to the ratio of input prices so the condition for the cost minimizing use of inputs also can be stated in terms of marginal product so to see why this condition must hold to be able to minimize the cost of producing a given level of output okay suppose m p uh, l divided uh, w bigger than m p uh, k divided r so then on the last dollar spend basis labor is a better deal than capital and the firm should use less capital and more labor to minimize cost so in uh, level of output if it increase its expenditure on labor by less than one dollar so that's uh, by substituting away from capital and toward labor uh, the firm could reduce its cost while producing the same level of output so see this substitution clearly would continue until the marginal product per dollar spent on capital exactly equal the marginal pro product per dollar spent on labor so that's why you can see okay this principle okay So this is what we discussed before and uh, we uh, can see the uh, example eh? Let's see okay for example is here uh, Terry's lawn service lawn service uh, ran five 
uh, small push mowers and two large riding mowers to cut the lawn of neighborhood households. So the marginal product of a small push mower is uh, three lawns per day. And the marginal product of a large, large uh, riding mower is six lawns per day. The rental price of a small uh, push mower is $10 per day. So whereas the rental of price of a large riding mower is $25 per day. So each dairy lawn service utilizing small push mowers and large riding mowers in a cost minimizing manner. So the answer is uh, less MPS and B the marginal product of a small push mower and MPL B the marginal product of a large riding mower. So if we let PS and PL be the rental prices of a small push mower and large riding mower respectively, cost minimizing requires that MPS divided PS equal to MPL divided PL. So substituting, substituting in the appropriate uh, values, we see that okay, uh, 3 divided 10 equal to MPS divided PS. Okay. Uh, bigger than MPL divided PL equal to 6 divided 25. So that's the product, the marginal pro uh, product per dollar spent on small push mower exceed the marginal product per dollar spent on the large riding mowers. So riding mowers are twice as productive as push mowers. So but more than twice as, as, as expensive. So the firm clearly is not minimizing cost and thus should use fewer riding mowers and more push mowers. Okay. This example for cost minimizing. Okay, we go back to here uh, change in the price of an input will lead to a change in the cost minimizing uh, input bundle okay so firm initially produce let's say here okay okay let's see the example here See, can so for that we can move until we can read here, okay. So, initial the uh, firm initially produced Q0 by employing the combination of input represented by uh, point A at a cost of C0, okay. So, suppose uh, this is a way we can see example of how that we can optimize. Eh? In input substitution, so suppose W0 falls to W1, okay. So the ISO cost curve uh, rotate uh, clock, uh, counter clockwise, uh, counter uh, clockwise. So moving. We should represent the same cost level prior, uh, prior to or the wage uh, change. So to produce the same level of outputs, Q0, okay. So we discussed about this, okay, uh, and we explained about this before in here, okay. almost similar, cost minimizing. So to produce uh, to produce same level of output, eh, the firm will produce at on a lower core ISO cost line eh, at the point B. So the slope of a new ISO cost line represents the lower wage relative to the rental rate of capital. Okay.
So for given input prices, different ISO cost will entail a different production cost. So even allowing for optimal substitution uh, between capital and labor. So each ISO cost uh, co correspond to a different level of output. And the ISO cost line uh, tangent to uh, higher ISO cost, ISO one will imply higher cost of production. Even assuming the firm uses the cost minimizing input mix. Okay. So in this uh, cost analysis, uh, we will discuss uh, for the last part, eh, the third part. Okay, until now. So we uh, continue uh, our cost analysis with our third part of this chapter. Right? Have a nice day. Thank you.